Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Neil Kulong, who always does his part well. Sir, welcome. I, I love how you delegate the responsibility out. That's what a, that's what a good manager does. I mean, you have to do it. It's the only way the, only way the kid's going to get experience. Everyone's got to be involved. Yeah. And I keep people involved, right? In fact, keeping keeping me involved is a full-time job. <laughs> and, and they're managing up as well. We all know that. <laughs> yes, they are. All right, so um, it was Pro Day was here last week. Every, everybody on the planet was here, it seemed. Um, Matt Eberflus was here. The entire Betts Bears contingent was here. Uh, Mike McDaniel was here, others as well. Uh, I guess Bryce Young worked out yesterday, and from what I'm reading, it sounds like he impressed a lot of people across the board. How are you now viewing this quarterback situation? Because C.J. Stroud, whom obviously I've done a couple of games where he's played, Bryce Young, I've only seen him on TV, but impressive, and the and the workout king Anthony Richardson and then Will Levis who I'm, I've seen more than the pro scouts have. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's amazing how quickly it seems that the bandwagon around Young just emptied out, isn't it? I mean, it was like yeah. he was the he was the easy number one pick. Yeah. In December, January, um, I, I always said there's a lot to like with with C.J. Stroud. He doesn't quite have the athleticism. I don't think that that Young does. And it, the, the thing with Young for me is it, it's not a physical trait. Uh, he has vision like very few players that you ever see. I mean, he really finds open receivers on the field. And granted, the, the, the comeback to that is, well, he's throwing to high-level pro receivers all the time. Well, good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Houston's going to be in position to – to uh, draft a few of those, you know, with with the say where they are, assuming obviously that Stroud goes number one, I I would see uh, most offensive coordinators probably being pretty happy with either one of them. Um, I could see arguments for both, and on on the field itself, for what you can truly measure, uh, Stroud's accuracy I think probably stands out as the top trait yeah. among the two of them. He has really good feet. He's really just a, a pure thrower of the football. There's a lot classically to really like about him. Young represents, I think, more of, of uh, the new style of offense in the NFL. Uh, you get a quarterback on the move. You can design things for him. Um, it's something that uh, Greg Roman probably won't get enough credit for uh, for his work in Baltimore was the, the, the designation of an offense that funneled uh, Lamar Jackson to the sideline more often than anything else, uh, wow. which saved his, um, generally speaking, it, it, it took a lot of, of hits away from him. Um, you can do that with, with Bryce Young if you want to use him that way, but he can throw. The, the kid's got an arm, a uh, very quick mm-hmm. release. There's a lot to really like about him. It just, it, it's, I would have thought, and I don't. This is a pointless argument to make because clearly this will never change. I, I would have thought that the the Hall of Fame worthy pro day from Zach Wilson would have taught people something about putting all of your eggs into that basket. You know, making that decision um, up until draft day is acceptable, but putting clearly that much weight into a pro day as opposed to what you saw on the field uh, comes with a significant risk. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not trying to knock uh, C.J. Stroud at all in that regard. I just I, I felt, for me, I, it, the body of work of both players is excellent. I just I yes. feel Young uh, put more down uh, in, in games uh, than Stroud has, and Stroud had the the better combine slash pro day. Um, not that that isn't valuable. I just think that we saw pretty much what we would have expected to see from both of them. And I don't know why uh, Stroud would jump ahead. Uh, if it is much more of a, a, a Carolina thing um, than anything else, okay, you know, I, I, I get it. I can definitely see why somebody would want Stroud over Young. But for me, um, Young is going to be it, it, it break a string of, of some kind of you know not so great luck at uh, taking quarterbacks number two overall. I, I think Young's going to be a good player. 
Yeah, uh, and the thing about uh, Stroud is this. I actually think Stroud is a good athlete, Neil. But there are guys that when they break the pocket, the first thing they want to do is run. He breaks the pocket, and the last thing he wants to do is run. Now, he had that great run in the uh, Peach Bowl game against uh, Georgia. Great run. All right, But that's a rarity for him. He keeps his head up. He's always trying to throw the ball downfield. He really doesn't want to run. That's the safer trade, too, isn't it? I mean, it, getting back to what I was saying about Lamar Jackson, they designed runs for him. But when they designed yeah. it, uh, he's getting close enough to the sideline, and they taught him, get out of bounds at all costs. Do not fight for two, three other yards. Get get your butt out of bounds and live to, to play another play. We don't need 10 yards if you can get seven in most cases. You know, over the course of the season, you're not going to benefit us by doing that. Stroud is the type that has the athleticism to get out of the pocket, but exactly as mm-hmm. you said, his eyes are down the field. That's mm-hmm. the, what I mean when I, I call him classic. That's sort of what I mean. It, it's not a running quarterback. It's more of a mobile quarterback who can it, it, he can evade pressure and still make plays down the field. Now, I, I came up watching Ben Roethlisberger, who does not have the, the, the foot speed of these kinds of players, but he threw a lot out of the pocket. He made plays down the field. Uh, the Steelers, in, in those days, created the, the secondary route. Receivers would go a certain place, and the, the play in the huddle would be, Ben's going to roll to this side or that side. If you're not getting the ball on your primary route, then you're going to go here. They set everything up based on that spontaneity. And I, I think Stroud has the ability uh, to, to run that sort of, of uh, scheme. It's not necessarily designed, but you can do that with him. He has the accuracy. I think that's the real value. And he's fleet enough afoot to be able to get out of the pocket and still deliver the ball down the field. I can see a, a, a lot of value in that for any team. You know, anyone is going to want uh, spontaneity to still be structured in some way. And I think you can do that, but the running, as, as we saw with Jalen Hurts, that threat to run, not just escape the pocket, but to run down the field, it makes it much harder on a secondary. Uh, it's always time how you, you do it. They are always reacting to what the offensive player is doing. Um, it, it, it's a challenge for them to stick with the receiver, and Young is the type that well, if you're that far back, I'm just going to go. I'm going to get 15 on you and then run out of bounds before you're going to know what's going on and you're going to be tired from the next play. Um, that stress, it, it, it adds up over the course of the game. That's a really tough player to defend. Um, for me, it, it's more mobility for time, not yards. You know, I, I, don't, mm-hmm. I don't know how long a quarterback in this league is going to be successful running that much. Um, we're also operating in the, the archetype here that requires every outstanding quarterback to play for 15 years. Maybe he doesn't play for 15 years. What if you get eight great years out of him? You know, is, is, mm-hmm. is that a bad pick? Uh, Cam Newton in Carolina, um, you know, his, his body betrayed him at the end of his career. But sure. I, I don't know, you'll find too many more physically gifted people than Cam Newton was. And he tore it up when he played, running and throwing. Uh, he came a long way as a passer pretty early in his career and, and won an MVP, you know, and played in one Super Bowl. He wasn't the type of player who was going to last 15, 18 years. But what he had in that time, um, he, he's a remarkable player. I'm not putting him in the Hall of Fame, but it, 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 an excellent player, an excellent cornerstone uh, for a franchise that had a lot of success when he was there. Is, is Bryce Young's game... Uh, able to do that. I mean, half of Cam Newton's size, but uh, that mobility can create a, a very dynamic and very dangerous offense over a large chunk of time, even if it isn't 15 years. So it, it, it's, it depends on how you want to uh, coordinate your offense. It's how you want to set up the pieces around them. Um, you know, for me, I, I, I'm going to take that chance with Young. That's just me. Um, I would mm-hmm. prefer. Uh, that ability off of the edge just because I, I can run more um, confusing isn't the right word, but uh, uh, tantalizing RPOs for an offense 
uh, defensively, they're going to want to commit one place or another. You get on the same page with your quarterback, knowing what they're looking at. If, if he is a film buff, which with by all accounts Bryce Young is, he's going to figure out what he needs to see in order to do what. And he's, he's going to be largely unstoppable uh, because of the threat and the usage of that speed, as well as the ability to throw quickly in short spaces. Um, it's, I, I feel like I can do more with an offense with Young running it right now than Stroud. And I, I would say that as far as Carolina goes, it's an excellent problem to have to decide between the two of them. So I'm not yeah. sure uh, exactly. you're, you're going to make a mistake if, if you know both of those players well. Yeah, no question. So what about Lamar Jackson now? Because Lamar Jackson, I want to be traded. And supposedly the Ravens tried three times. There are no takers. Now, there are probably no takers of the number he wants, but there are no takers. How do you view his situation? I, I, I think uh, what Lamar Jackson says, the request to be traded, what he wants is to be paid. Yes. I think in, in most cases to suggest on March 27th, like he did, and let's keep in mind, you know, you might cast your mind back to the to, to the playoff week um, when people were, were preparing to ask John Harbaugh whether or not Lamar Jackson was going to play that week. Lamar Jackson went out of his way to just, you know, tweet up everything that was wrong with him at that point and say that he wasn't going to play the game. It, it's a bold move, you know. Players don't usually do that. Um Fast forward that to yesterday. Um, I think John Harbaugh was scheduled to speak in about 95 seconds before Jackson's tweet went out. Again, I, I don't think that was an accident. <laughs> I don't think it was a coincidence. Um, I, I think Jackson's kind of playing hardball a little bit. He's sort of saying, uh, this is what happened. You're going to hear this from me. You're not going to get the coach's opinion of what's going on. This is what I want. Uh, you're going to write about this, not whatever Harbaugh says. You're going to make him react to what I said. And I, I know that because it's exactly what we did when it came out. I, you know, I almost, Harbaugh is a secondary issue to, to what Jackson said. Um, to boil the whole situation down, we can't say on March 28th side has any more leverage than the other because the, the, the hypothetical unofficial deadline to all of this is the day before, the, probably the, the hours leading into the draft. That's yeah. the last time Baltimore can get anything by trading Lamar Jackson. Right. They, it, it, he is representing that he's not going to play on the franchise tag, and it's the only piece of leverage that he has. He cannot sign the tag and, and not play penalty-free. Now, granted, that that's not exactly helping him get paid, Um to, to not play, but if he insists that this is the contract that I want, this is what I deserve, this is what I earn, and there's market evidence to suggest that it is, um, you could see why he might want to do that. Um, Baltimore does not have a tremendous amount of cap space, and Jackson, who has not signed his tag, therefore is not officially on the team, That's right. Um, is counting for $32 million on their cap. So, now that the quarterback free agency market's over, you've got one option outside of Lamar Jackson at quarterback. That's Tyler Huntley. Yep. If Tyler Huntley was great, you would not have franchise tagged Lamar Jackson. That's the most understated you'll hear from me ever. They know who Tyler Huntley is. The NFL knows who Tyler Huntley is. That's why he's not signed anywhere yet. <clears throat> Overall, Baltimore is putting all their eggs into the basket that Jackson's going to play this season. They have a contract out offer to, to Jackson. They would like him to sign. Whether he will or not is going to depend largely on the, the market. Will anybody else want uh, uh, to pay up, not just in contract, but in draft assets to acquire him? Um, it's also important to know Jackson does not have to be acquired for two first-round picks. They right. can trade him for less than that. Um, I don't know if Baltimore is willing to do that. I'm not sure there is a team that would want to do that, considering uh, the contract that he needs. But at the same time, it comes down to this. They don't have to make that decision today. There's a long time between now and the start of the draft. I don't think anybody, because nobody else needs to move, I think the only movement we're really going to hear on this 
short of the potential that the Ravens just say, you know what, let's just get this over with and, and give him – we'll up our offer. We'll see if he bites for that. Uh, as far as him moving teams, that's probably not going to happen until before the draft because they're going to wait it out. Right now, nobody would do this. If, if you went into a store and what you wanted to buy normally costs $5 – Today it's on sale for two. You'd be pretty excited, right? Yeah. You'd go back to the store hoping that it's on sale for two, like it was that one time, and you might mm-hmm. wait because you think it's going to go on sale uh, until tomorrow. Or, uh, tomorrow would be on sale for two dollars. That's basic market evaluation. They don't need to spend retail for Lamar Jackson because the Ravens don't have an option. There's nothing they can do. Uh, in, in short of getting Lamar to take the contract that he doesn't want to sign and sign it, there's, there's nothing else the Ravens can do to make Lamar Jackson play. Contractually, he can't go anywhere else without a qualifying offer that the Ravens get to approve or reject. They cannot make Lamar Jackson the person play this season. If he doesn't play, they're completely screwed. They don't have an option. They have no cap space. They have bad draft capital. They can't move up. And they need these players because they don't even have a full team, and they only have $7 million in space. That's before their draft picks. Jackson or bust is really what Baltimore is saying. So if, if they have to make a trade, it's going to be right before the draft, and it's going to have to be for probably more than what any team is going to want to pay uh, for the right to give Lamar Jackson this massive contract. So. Uh, in, in my mind, it's the Ravens are going to have to pony up to give him the extension that he wants, or he's not going to play. Yeah, uh, no question. Last one for you, and this is a tough one to uh, um, to maybe null out. But the Eagles have brought back Kelsey, one year deal on Lane Johnson. They brought back Fletcher Cox. I mean, they're bringing back some of the uh, Brandon Graham. So they're bringing back several of the older players. Are they risking being too sentimental about some of the people that got them, helped get them to the Super Bowl? You know, I, it, that's always a tough question, and it's one that doesn't get honestly answered until it's all said and done. Um, if you want to look at it historically, what they're doing is a bad idea because teams just don't repeat like that uh, particularly often, um, except for the team that came back and beat them in the second half of the Super Bowl. They seem to do it quite a bit. Um it, 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 you don't want to be as, as simplified to say this either works or it doesn't work. You have, you have to look at the players. Um, I, I think there's a lot left in Lane Johnson. Um, mm-hmm. Fletcher Cox has been an outstanding player. He's not quite the same, but at the same time, um, mm-hmm. you also lost Javon Hargrave. Right. Uh, dominant defensive tackle is not something that just falls out of the air. Um, Cox, at his price, is probably the most reasonable option they would have had anyway. You know, you're going to pay an inferior player probably the same amount of money that that, that they're going to pay Cox. Um, And they're not familiar with that player, most likely. It's the fact that Javon Hargrave played himself to be one of the highest-paid players in the game, uh, which is remarkable in in and of itself, I might add. Um, you really want to harp on anything with that the fact that they got him for 27 million over or 20 uh, what nine million a year over three years um, a little while ago the, the the fact that Hargrave outperformed that contract as steeply as he did is is amazing to me I think yeah. it's great uh, he, he earned every penny they weren't going to mm-hmm. be in the market for him they almost had to keep Cox and I think Lane Johnson you've, you've got a solid offensive lineman Look, the Steelers just signed LaRaven Clark last week. And I, I had a scout tell me yeah. the, that LaRaven Clark is, in, in this scout's opinion, the worst person in this draft. And I, the same scout also predicted he'd be a third-round draft pick because there simply aren't very many of them. Right. When you have one, you need to keep one, regardless of where he is. Mm-hmm. And this is the price you have to pay. That, that's why they make as much money as they do. It's, it, it's a valuable position. I don't want to act like it isn't. But there just right. aren't very many six foot six, 30-pound guys that can move their feet walking around the earth. And very few of them have played American football. So you have to keep the ones that can play at an elevated level. Um, you cannot start 
left tackle. And I think the Steelers know that too. You also need to have guys in, in, in the event of injury. So players like him that, frankly, um, I, I think have come pretty close to that scout's evaluation of him throughout his career to this point uh, will continue to get a job. So it, when you have one, you got to keep them. So I, I think there is, it's fair to question the, the sentimentality part of it, but a lot of it, if, if you look at them uh, uh, decision by decision, I think they're the right market decision uh, for them to field the team um, because I don't know how good the other options were. That That's not denigrating uh, the players in question. It's just that these are good players. We're familiar with them. we with them. Uh, let's just keep them, even if we might have to pay a little bit more to do that. Right. Well, never sentimental with us to have you on. It's just because you're darn good. Sir, thank you. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys.